knows how you come across somebody once in a while you, you shouldn't have messed with. That's me. Well, I'm all back down. I am not an African American. You're Oreo cookie. White down. in the inside and black on the outside. I don't have an afro. I have an Amerifro. Talking that idiotic stuff you talk about, I will slap you. Go ahead. Make my day. Black at the ace of spades, but 100, 100% American. Heard around the world by everybody and their mama. The Jesse Lee Peterson Radio Show. Uniting the races with truth instead of dividing them with lies. We're also rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man. Good morning again. I am Jesse Lee Peterson. Welcome to the third hour of the show. It's amazing. For now, I have with me a good friend, someone I am fortunate to know and to call friend. David Limbar is with me. He is the brother of Russ Limbar, of course, a conservative columnist, political commentator, and a lawyer. He is the author of Crimes Against Liberty, as well as his brand new book, The Great Destroyer, Barack Obama's War on the Republic. David, good morning, sir. Welcome to the show. Hey, how are you, Jesse Lee, my my hero? What's going on? (laughs) All is well. I've been seeing you all over everywhere talking about your brand new book. Congratulations. Uh, Thank you very much. Yeah, how have you been doing? I've been doing very well, David. The enemies, my enemies are coming after me, but because I understand that it's a spiritual battle between good and evil, I am becoming better for it rather than being able to destroy me. Yes, uh, you have been. You're a man of God, and you've been, uh, I think, you're a guy that, that has been under trial by fire for a long time. You're, you've, sp- you've displayed a lot of courage, and adversity builds character, as you know. Of course, you already had that in abundance anyway, but I, I just so appreciate what you do out there and the, and the leadership you've shown in, in standing up for principles, irrespective of race and, and, with, and consistent with your belief that we're all one, yep. that, that we want to be colorblind. And, and yep. I know it's a fantasy, but we still we have to aspire to it. That's right. That's right. Well, I appreciate that, David. That means a lot coming, coming from you. David, I, uh, there's some breaking news I don't know if you are uh, aware of, and I'd like to get your feedback. According to the Associated Press, the uh, Muslim Brotherhood candidate Mohammed Morzai was declared the winner Sunday in Egypt's first free presidential election in history. What's your comment on that? Oh, my gosh. And then, not only that, but that Obama said it's a great day for democracy or something like that. Yes. I mean, do you know that these guys, and I talk about in my book, The Great Destroyer, how this administration not only turns a blind eye to uh, Islamic extremism, uh, but <clears throat> the, he actually even helped in, in the Egyption, uh, in, a, in a nonpartisan way, as far that's the best case scenario, it might have even been partisan, actually giving advice to the Muslim Brotherhood Party over there, how it could best uh, get its message out and and help with polling and different kinds of things. And then when they were called on it, they said, well, we're not partisan. It's not up to us who wins. We're giving advice to everyone. Now, can you imagine an administration of the United States of America saying that it, it uh, are congratulating itself for taking a, a, a nonpartisan approach to an election that could usher in an era of hostility toward the United States and acting like it's impartial in, in deference to some... A diversity notion or, or some tolerance, perverse tolerance notion, when, when their very help, uh, the administration's money and advice could help this uh, anti-American group come to power, a group that is openly hostile to Israel. I, 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 it's, it's flabbergasting. It is. <laughs> the mindset of these people. It's like a nightmare, David. I, I, it's just, I can't believe that this has happened in my America, or to no. my America, it's like it's it's a nightmare. It is really a nightmare, and this leftist uh, ideology uh, is. David, hold that thought. Let me take a quick break, and we'll come back and uh, let you finish that point. Eight 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 seven seven five three seven seven three. Back in a moment. Bye. 
In response to Muhammad Marzai winning the election, or however he got it, both Iran and the White House held the victory of Egypt's president-elect Muhammad Marzai of the Muslim Brotherhood this weekend. For its part, the White House believes it represents a milestone in Egypt's transition to democracy, while Iran views it as a revolutionary movement of the Egyptian people in its final stage of the Islamic awakening and a new era of change in the Middle East. This is mind-blowing. This is amazing. David Limbaugh is with me. My good friend David is here. You got to get his brand new book, if you don't already have it, The Great Destroyer, Barack Obama's War on the Republic. David, let me ask, what do you know or believe about Barack Obama, his relationship with the Muslim world? He seemed to be more connected to that than Christianity itself. You know, we uh, Christians are not supposed to challenge uh, the faith of someone because we don't know what's in their hearts. And I will readily admit that, but I will say this, that he certainly seems that uh, seems to have sympathy for the, uh, and this is just what we see on the outside, yes. we can't make any ultimate assessments about what's in his heart, but what, what indications we get from the outside, he seems to have a lot of sympathy and, and uh, kind of affection for Islam. If you remember in one of his books, he said the sweetest sound he's ever heard is the Muslim called to prayer. I don't know how a Christian, this is no offense to Muslims, by the way, it would go the same way either way. Right. I don't see how an authentic Christian could think a call to prayer to another religion, which is contrary to your religion, uh, could warm your heart. I just don't <laughs> see how that's logically and emotionally and spiritually possible. Um, and, and then you, you see his advisors who, who downplay uh, the terrorist, terrorism he, he always wants to sympathize with the people who uh, are, are openly hostile and militant. Uh, and, you know, we saw it with the, the, the Ground Zero mosque. And then we see him always going out of his way, you know, to even to pray. I, I saw him one time take his shoes off to pray. Now, God, the God of the Bible, Jesse Lee, as I know you know and, and agree, frowns on idolatry. Yeah. And if, if, from a Christian perspective, if, if you are worshiping another god, then, then that couldn't please the god of the Bible. Who, now, again, I'm not arguing who, who the, the true god is. I'm saying same thing with Muslims. The, the, if, if, you, if a Muslim uh, worshiped a Christian god, they, now that, that isn't to, to, to validate any kind of activity against someone or hostility, but you don't openly pray just to be respectful toward someone else. You don't pray to some someone that you don't consider a god, if, if yep. you're a Christian. That's I mean, right. That's and, right. And, and, and not calling out for holidays of Christianity, not recognizing Christianity in his proclamations or, or prayer days. He's always reluctant to do that, and yet going out of his way to do so toward Islam. It just says something about where his... It, it seems to suggest something about where his sympathies lie. That's all I'm saying. You know, the Bible says that <clears throat> out of the mouth, uh, the heart speaks. So can't we know what's in a person's heart by what they say and do? Well, you know, I, when I say that, I'm just trying to bend over backwards and be <laughs> careful with this. I don't. I, I certainly think that I can form reasonable assessments and not ultimately know maybe, but I sure have strong suspicions. <laughs> How about you? I do. I, I have always, I've said since uh, Obama's been in the White House that I can't say for sure that he is a, a Muslim, but I can say for sure and without a doubt that he's not a Christian. There is nothing that Obama has done to imply that he is a Christian. But as you just demonstrated, there are many things that he's done to imply that he's a Muslim. Yeah, even even his church, that the, the Christian church that he went to, was debatably uh, Christian. I mean, black militant uh, liberation theology. Yeah, I've always understood it focuses more on on uh, race and ideology than it does. Christ-centeredness. I don't know. You may know more no, about that. You're right I, about that. There's no way Obama could have sat under Jeremiah Wright Jr. for 20 years and call him. He said that Jeremiah was like an uncle to him, married right. him, Michelle, baptized their children. 
gave money to him. There's no way Obama could have sat there for that long and not agreed with uh, Jeremiah Wright Jr. It just doesn't work that way. No. Yeah. Uh, that's where that's what we have. And so you, you've got a guy who I don't think is authentic about much of anything. Uh, we don't know anything about his past, and 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 we we are what we do know is troubling. But what where he is authentic, and where he did telegraph is his radical liberalism. Yes. And, and and all these conservatives, these elitist conservatives, who would not admit that Obama is what he is, that is a radical liberal. I think they have uh, they have a lot of. of explaining to do and some of these people are still that way i mean I some of these, they still <laughs> yeah. apologize for oh no he's not really a socialist he's not really a statist or a marxist you guys are you guys are extremists steven suggest no no i think they are uh, uh, being irrational and stubborn and, and for for the sake of trying to look tolerant or whatever are not going out of their way trying to prevent charges of racism or whatever it is but they're not calling they're not uh, uh, depicting the truth for what it is. What does Obama, and you talk about it in your book, what, de- what does Obama's love for socialism come from? Well, wasn't he, uh, I think that he, had, he was mentored by Franklin Marshall Davis. I think his mother, uh, who was a communist, I think his, his mother uh, was, his white mother was anti-America. I think everything you read about, it, he describes it. Uh, and and his, his true father, his birth father was uh, a radical as well. Everybody he hung around with in, in his community, community organizing days, Chicago, radical. His, his teaching of the Constitution uh, at, at the university was had radical tendencies. Uh, I, I don't think he's ever done anything in his adult life. Even at Harvard, he <laughs> brought that guy, that professor, Bell, supported him. Uh, and in and, and his radical approach, I mean, there's nothing centrist or moderate about anything uh, concerning Obama. So he, Obama uh, really cannot help himself then, because I noticed that he's not turning around or trying to change what he's doing. So it just in him now. He can't help it. Let me take one final break, David. When I come back, we're going to tell the folks how to get your book and let you respond to that question. Eight 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 seven seven Jesse. Back in a moment. Driving all the old men crazy The boys are back in town Okay, folks, if you want a real understanding of what's going on with Barack Obama, I urge you to get David Limbaugh's brand new book, The Great Destroyer, Barack Obama's War on the Republic. David, I got to tell you that uh, my friend Patrick Rooney asked me to say hello to you and congratulations on your book. He loved your book. Oh, tell him. He is great. I really love Patrick. Tell him, give him my best regards and miss talking to him. Maybe we can catch up one of these days. I definitely will. Uh, will Obama be reelected? I don't think so. In fact, you see recent polling data to suggest that Romney's getting more and more ahead, like 48 to 44 or something. And, and we don't have any idea how skewed that is. I think if yeah. it is skewed, it's in Obama's favor and that this could be a serious landslide because I don't think people answer completely honestly for a lot of reasons. Yeah, I, I know a lot of I, I personally know some white folks who uh, they've been asked about Obama. They did not tell the truth in the survey because they don't want to be called racist. And but when they go to the poll, they will not be voted for him again. And there's another thing beyond the race thing and the so-called Wilder effect. Yes, I, I think people there's been a media narrative mainstream media narrative that even a lot of the new media conservatives have gone along with, which is, I mean, thoughtlessly gone along with in their case, which is that Obama's a very likable guy. He's a wonderfully likable guy. And I I think that he has behaved in a way that is not likable. He's been a bully. Yeah. He's been an adolescent, a narcissist who refused to accept the responsibility for his actions. And, and he doesn't, he hasn't nice to people. He accuses Republicans of, of being, wanting dirtier uh, air, dirtier water, a smaller America, hostage takers, all this. And so when somebody asks the question, do you like so-and-so? 
whether it's a poll or not, <laughs> and you know that 90% of the people like this person, you'll, you'll come off as a jerk if you say you don't like somebody that everybody else likes. And I think, in truth, if they thought about it, they would go, well, I really don't like this guy. He's destroying my country, and yeah. he's not acting nice about it. What's likable about him? He smiles a lot, and he's got a, some arguably got charisma, but I don't really think he's a likable guy. No offense. I mean, I'm just, I just don't. I'm trying to be honest. And therefore, I don't think ultimately that that'll translate in, in the polls. And even if it does, even if he is likable, uh, the policies are over, will override it overwhelmingly, and people will vote against him on the basis of his policy. That's a very good point. David, they can get your book, The Great Destroyer, at any bookstore? Yes, anywhere. Amazon, Barnes & Noble, every bookstore out there, I hope. It's The Great Destroyer. And, and Jesse Lee, again, I'm sincere. Thank you so much for uh, doing what you do and for having me on today. Thank you, my friend. And say hello to Rush for me. I'll do it. All right, buddy. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, David. Okay, folks. I'm sorry I take occasion to call. Tomorrow I will. Have a good day. In the Jesse Lee Peterson Show, produced by Bond, Brotherhood Organization of a New Destiny. Views expressed by guests and callers on today's program may not necessarily represent the views of the station. For more information, call 1-800-411-BOND. That's 1-800-411-BOND. Or visit our website at bondinfo.org.